like turtles. While this kid is straight nightmare fuel, he makes a really good point. We all love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Whether you're a fan of the original comic series, the 90s cartoon, or are coming on board with the new Mutant Mayhem movie, there's a turtle in this mystery box for you. So we have to start off with these two. My original Ninja Turtles from all the way back in 1988. These were the very first ones that Playmates came out with, and I found them about a year ago in a cookie tin that was filled with crayons at my mom's house. And it's amazing how good they look for 35 years old. You know, they have the kind of two types of plastic. This is a little bit of a harder plastic, whereas the arms and the legs are a little bit softer, and it has that kind of waxy, oily feel to it that the, you know, the old plastic has. But it's remarkable that I found Leo and Ralph because these were kind of the combination of my two favorite turtles. Leo was my favorite, but when I was reading comics back in 1988, all the turtles wore red. So I took the weapons off of Leo and put them on Ralph's uh, body here. And so this was kind of my perfect turtle that I created with the katana blades and everything. Now, unfortunately, those have been lost to time, but this is a great segue into the history of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Way back in 1984, two friends, Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, were hanging out in their living room, goofing around, just trying to make each other laugh, doodling, talking about some of their favorite comics of the day. They were totally into kind of the hot books of the time. Uh, New Teen Titans over at DC, which was, you know, a great book done by Marv Wolfman and George Perez about teenage heroes. They loved Marvel's mutants, the X-Men. And of course, they were infatuated with what was really kind of the top book of the day, which was Frank Miller's Daredevil. And while they were talking about all this, Kevin Eastman drew kind of a quick sort of doodle sketch, combining all of the things they loved, but kind of making fun of it as well, making a teenage mutant ninja turtle, kind of the slowest moving creature there possibly was. Little did they know that that sketch would turn into a multi-billion dollar enterprise. And so they, they, they loved the idea, they decided to expand on it, and they even tied the turtle's origin into Daredevil's origin. If you remember, Daredevil as a child uh, pushed an old man out of the way and was hit in the face with this toxic goo that blinded him but enhanced all of his other senses. Well, it turns out that goo actually crept down into the sewers and hit four little turtles, turning them into the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that we know and love. And in 2008, NECA gave us this absolutely perfect set of the Ninja Turtles from their very first appearances when they were drawn by both Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. And they're just gorgeous. You can see they've got like the longer necks and sort of the exaggerated feet and, and these, these classic proportions. And of course, the Ninja Turtles in the comics all wore red bandanas. Now that changed once we got into the cartoons, but for my introduction to the Ninja Turtles, they wore red. And these four figures are just perfect representations of that original look of the Ninja Turtles. Yes, these are the turtles that I have waited 30 years for. This is the new Target exclusive four pack, the return to New York Turtles. Now, I've seen these referred to as the Jim Lawson Turtles, and I guess that's because Lawson's art was involved in the Return to New York storyline, but I have to take offense with that. These turtles do not look anything like Jim Lawson's artwork. In fact, what makes them so perfect is these are the turtles that are best represented by the very first issue of Ninja Turtles that I ever got, issue 14 back in 1988. Now, as I mentioned, Eastman and Laird together drew the first 11 issues of the Turtle comic, but business was getting kind of crazy. They were getting pulled in all kinds of different directions. They were having a little bit of artistic differences, and they kind of split up and started splitting issues. And it just so happened that the first issue I ever got 
was issue 14, which was drawn by Kevin Eastman, and the cover had inks by Eric Talbert, and that really became the foundation of my concept of what the turtles look like. They have this type of face with a little bit more of a square-jawed look. They have the great red bandanas, the squared-off turtle shell on the front with the cross hatching, and the awesome hatched turtle shell on the back. The feet are much more in proportion to the rest of the body. They're far more athletic and boxy, and this has been captured perfectly by NECA in this set. Oh, these things are incredible. Now, NECA toys, I have quite a few, and they get a pretty bad rap for the stickiness of their articulation and some of the fragility of the figures. I have not found that to be the case with these. These things are wonderfully articulated. They can get into such incredible dynamic poses. Each of the different turtles has a unique head sculpt. You can see Donnie here is more placid, whereas Raph has a much more angry kind of scowl. They come with extra hands so that you can get Raph holding his sigh in his hand or between his fingers like this. All of the weapons fit nicely onto their belts, just like the way Kevin Eastman drew them in the comic. And they even come with alternate bandana threads, so you can have them more in motion, in action, or in more of a static pose like I have with Mikey here. Mikey, of course, has got his nunchucks. He's got more of a grin on his face. And, of course, Leo, our leader, has kind of that I'm barking orders type of look. Oh, these are the turtles that I have dreamt of for so long. They are absolutely perfect. These are going on my desk because I plan on playing with these a ton over the next few months. If you would like to see an even better in-depth review of these four figures, I really encourage you to check out Pixel Dan's review. He did a great job with this, and just do it after you finish watching my video. But these represent the next stage of evolution in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle legacy and artwork with the appearance from Kevin Eastman. All right, let's dig into this mystery box. And right here off the top, actually, I've got some of the newer figures that I have. These are Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle little people. Oh my gosh, just the cute factor is absolutely through the roof with these. We've got all four of our guys with their little weapons. Donnie's got like a, a turtle communicator. Mikey's got a piece of pizza to go with his nunchucks. Yeah, they've really expanded the little people lines into all kind of pop culture brands. And how could you not include Ninja Turtles as a part of that? Now, in this box, there have obviously been hundreds, if not thousands, of Ninja Turtle figures made over the years. But when I really got into the toys was when I was trying to enjoy them with my kids. And that was in the early 2010s Nickelodeon show. And so here's like the Baxter Stockman figure. Now, so what's going to be predominantly in this box are going to be figures from that Nickelodeon era. So I can't wait to kind of dig back through these and take a look at them. There's going to be some surprises in here too, I'm sure. But that's going to be the vast majority of everything. So let's grab us a turtle. Let's grab us the leader of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Leonardo. And I really loved the raps and how they really kind of up played kind of the fighting and the ninja aspects on these designs. Plus, these Ninja Turtles from Playmates for this era had great articulation, much better than the ones that we got back in the 80s and the early 90s. So there's there's Leo. Here is Donnie. And this one even has a little bit of different articulation. Y'all will have to correct me if there's figures from like different lines in here. You know, I really was buying everything I could of these for my kids back when they came out. And so they've probably all gotten combined. But of course, here is Raph. And I love Raphael's, like his shell is cracked in this design. That was such a cool nod to kind of his his attitude as being like the ultimate brawler out of the four brothers. And let's see, ah, my main man. I love, I love Donatello. You know, he just brings the fun everywhere he goes. So here's a great example of Donatello. But they really expanded this line, and they had so many just crazy out there characters. Maybe not as many as the original line, but they brought you stuff like monkey brains. I mean, how great is it in a Ninja Turtle line 
that you've got this just absolutely insane character like Monkey Brains. So good. That doesn't mean that we weren't getting classic villains like this version of Shredder. I mean, this is certainly a a first-class Shredder. I love the armor plates that he has and the, the giant spikes and claws. He probably has a helmet loose around here somewhere. We'll see if we find it as we go through the box. And then I think... So this was like a mutated Shredder. I think he came in like a two-pack with another figure, but this was like Shredder as a mutant. He almost looks like Clawful from Masters of the Universe, but another kind of cool Shredder version. One of my absolute favorites. Cockroach Terminator with like this play feature where he has this like saw blade coming out of him. I think he's he's missing his his antenna up there, but he's got a cyborg eye and like cyborg parts like we needed to make cockroaches more dangerous and, and vile than they already are. Here comes cockroach Terminator. Let's switch it back to some of the good guys, including the turtles, bestest pal, April O'Neil. And she was super cute in this cartoon. We've seen a ton of different versions of April across the different turtles media, but this one's one of my favorites. She looks like a teenager. She looks like someone who would hang out with the turtles and befriend them. And she has that really classic kind of anime style that I think works really well. We got our foot soldiers. Now, the foot, of course, is another Daredevil reference because the the bad guy ninjas that Daredevil had to face off against in his book when Frank Miller was writing it were called The Hand. And so Eastman and Laird said, well, our bad guy ninjas are going to be The Foot. And there it is. You can see the foot logo right there on his on his head. So here we got a, a pretty classic foot ninja. And while we're thinking about Daredevil references, let's look around and see if we can find... Well, here's a version of it. Here is Master Shredder. So, so awesome. So Shredder's a rad. He's got his stick. He comes with this awesome, like, sparring helmet. This is so cool. He's got a great articulated tail. And, like, he really does look like a pretty badass ninja in this this version so i'm gonna put see if i can put this this back on him so that i don't lose that <laughs> look how his ears pop out oh, that's really cool that is pretty good so shredder of course was the the master for the turtles here is, is this tiger claw yeah tiger claw one of the i believe one of the turtles allies lots of cool sculpting on this one he's got his eye patch good paint efforts he's got you know great kind of weapons all around oh it looks like he's even got like a blaster that comes out and fits in his pocket he probably came with two of these since he does have two pockets we'll see if we can find that but super cool tiger claw all right this is where my knowledge starts to evaporate um it's not... Oh, wait, wait. Is this Squirrelanoid? This may be Squirrelanoid. He's like a, a cybernetic crazy squirrel. Oh, 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 look. Yeah, I think... Uh... Oh, there's like a little squirrel head that pops out of his mouth. Oh, it works like this. Oh, that's horrible. So that's obviously a throwback to aliens, but there's like a, a crazy looking squirrel mouth that pops out. Oh, that's so disgusting. I love it. Absolutely love it. This guy is, uh, it's not Razor. He's got these crazy wings. I don't remember. Somebody will help me in the comments on what the name of this dude is. But I, you can see I took him straight out of the package. He still has some packaging on him. So that's, this means this was probably one of the later ones in the line where my kids had basically stopped playing with these and they were just ones that dad was collecting and throwing in. Still pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Krang. Krang. I love these robotic Krangs. And, of course, the little Krang can come out. We're going to leave him in there. But look at look at how disgusting that little brain with arms is on his cybernetic body. And they did a great job of, like, including the cybernetic parts going all the way around and, like, plugging in to his spinal cord and going up to this robot skeleton-esque head. So cool. Such a cool version of Krang. I love it. Let's crank these open. Okay, so these are these are still the that that era of Ninja Turtles, but I think these are Revoltech. So 
they are going to be just crazy articulated. Yeah, look at these ball joints everywhere on these. So I know that I picked up the four main turtles. Of course, here's Mikey. One of the things that I, I don't always love about Revoltech is sometimes the joints really do kind of mess with the sculpt. Like, here is good old-fashioned Playmates Mikey. And that's a pretty solid-looking figure. Here's the Revoltech one. Even with all of this extra articulation, I don't think this is a better figure than the one that you could buy at Walmart or Target for way less. So let's actually look at a couple of more and see kind of how they how they fit in. So here, of course, is Donnie, and Donnie's a little bit taller. He has his bow shaft right there. Uh, I like that they really did continue to distinguish and differentiate each of the turtles in this version. And the fact that Donnie's like a little taller than his brothers goes well. Okay, plus these joints, while they're great, they do tend to kind of come apart a little bit. But again, those are almost like hunched forward, the way the shoulder joints fit there. And I'm sure they're going to be exactly the same, yeah, for Leo. Like, he, he looks like almost like he's crouched down. It's like they don't have any neck, but then they've got these big shoulders. I don't, I don't know that I love these. I mean, I know that they were probably like, there's Ralph with his, uh, he's got his crack in his shell. I know these were probably like super expensive, but they're not my favorite. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Those are not my favorite. I would much prefer these versions. You know, the actual toy versions, I think, are better. You know, you can put his nunchucks back here on his shell. That's pretty sweet. They came with all kinds of weapons that I have right here. Oh, God. Because we needed another one of these guys to, like, you know, rock our dreams and all of our nightmares. The crazy squirrel annoyed dude. All right. Here we go. Here is rock steady and that is a pretty bad looking rhino he's got like a star he's got his you know feet he's all ready to pounce and like charge at you really really good head sculpt and i'm sure his boy bebop is going to show up here pretty pretty quickly this one i think was called spider bites it's like some kind of like computer spider thing but all of these different appendages are all articulated which is pretty cool i think that's pretty sweet and here's like the classic Master Splinter. So I want to say this is like the first edition of Splinter. He has his robe. He's got his tail. Really solid rat face. Lots of good paint articulation. Just these are simple figures with, you know, kind of, they kind of have five points of articulation, but they do have some ball joints here and there. Sometimes you get a little bit of, of swivel at some different places, but they're made to be played with. I mean, that's exactly what these things are. And I did. I mean, I had these bad boys like on my desk for several years because I really did just love kind of having them out, putting them in different poses, particularly the turtles. I mean, those were the ones. All these other bad guys are really cool, but it's the turtles that I love. And you can see as we've gone through a big part of my collection of turtles, I focus predominantly on different versions of the turtles themselves. But one character who does deserve a mention is Yusagi Yojimbo. So the Turtles, back in 84 when they came out, they really sparked an independent comics revolution. And there was all of these speculators and people, you know, lining up at comic shops to buy the latest, greatest new black and white book. But there was already creators out there that were doing this, like Dave Sims with Cerebus and uh, Stan, oh, is it Stan Ozaki with Yosaki Yojimbo. And it was cool because they would actually cross over with turtles. And so in one of the earliest turtles issues, uh, everybody's favorite, like samurai rabbit actually crossed over with the Ninja turtles. And then that carried on in the different cartoon variations of the show. So this was pretty cool that we got, uh, Yosaki in, uh, in this version as well. Oh, here's some of my favorites. I love the baby turtles. Look, it's like a preteen. It's like a preteen Donnie. Oh, he's so sweet. And there, I wish I, oh, 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 there's preteen Mike. Oh, look at him. He's just smiling and like waving at you. And they did. They came with all their little, all their little instruments of death as these little tiny preteen turtles. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, 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 here's Raph looking great. Got his red on. He's already, even as a little kid, he's already scuffed up his shell and we got to find him. We, we got to find him before we can, before we can properly move on. He has to be in here somewhere. There he is. The leader. 
and it's like they have like like a wooden sword. Like he's he hasn't been allowed to get like his full katana blade. He's he's working with like a practice sword. But here are the baby preteen mutant ninja turtles. So sweet. That's so great. Oh, this one's just so fun. Dark Beaver. Wouldn't you love to be in the room with these guys when they were like creating all of these insane characters? It's like, let's make a demonic dark beaver to attack the turtles. So cool. Here is another cool, like kind of hyper articulated Leo. Very choice, a little bit different. And again, that says, what does that say on it? It doesn't say, it doesn't give me a manufacturer, but I wonder if this may actually be somebody other than Playmates. I can't tell. I don't remember. So hopefully you guys will help me out. Here's a set of turtles that is different. So let's pull these out because these were part of two packs with the Batman and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles team up. And so here's Donnie, definitely my least favorite. I really, really hate that head sculpt for Donnie. But these were kind of cool. I ended up getting them all. You can see how his belt forms that D right there, and he is a little bit taller, a little bit different colored. Let's see who's next. Wow, look at how massive this Ralph is. I mean, that is a big Raphael, and he's mean. Look at how his jaw juts out. And these were based off of the art of the Batman Turtles team-up. So just look at the size difference between Donnie and Raph. That is, that is just, that's crazy. So let's see who's next. So here is, of course, Leo. More traditional. He's kind of like, I guess, the sort of the standard size of all of these. I do love, uh, this is a good-looking shell that they have. And, of course, he comes with really cool weapons, but it's just a different art style. And you know me, I love figures that are based on a specific artist art style. And then this was, I think, the first one that I got. This is Mikey. Oh, it's cool. Look, this is one of the few times where you see their bandana tied, and it comes on both sides of his shoulders. He does have, like, the metal chains on his nunchucks. Pretty cool. So, you know, a different look for the turtles. Got some more there. Oh, Attila the Frog. Just look at the detail in like the 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 crown of of uh, tree limbs and stuff. Oh, the tongue does move. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, get him, Attila. He's got a he's got a little thing on his back. Again, these are kids' toys. They're meant to be fun. That's pretty fun. I think that and, you know minimal articulation. But who needs articulation when you have an articulated tongue on your giant frog mutant. Speaking of mutants, Mutagen Man. So gross. Uh, this one, I do have like a complete set of the uh, um, Super 7 Ultimates Turtles. If you guys want me to do a video on those, just let me know. Let me know in the comments. Oh, and while you're thinking about it, if you like the intersection of comics history and action figures, and I know you do because you've made it this far in the video, go ahead, hit like, leave me a comment, and subscribe to Carbon Scoring. We're bringing you stuff like this every single week without fail and you know, we're just never going to stop. We're going to keep giving you what you want. Like Mondo Gecko. And a cool nod here. So Mondo Gecko is like, he came with like a skateboard and he's obviously a non-insurance selling gecko. But that logo on his chest that says, I can't tell, T-O, I don't know what it says, but that is clearly a ripoff of Christian Hasoy's skateboard logo from the 1980s. So Mondo Gecko with the Christian Hasoy call out on his t-shirt very cool snake weed with no legs we got to find a snake weed that's got have we got legs for snake weed somewhere in here somewhere probably but this is a alien looking horrible thing called snake weed this one oh oh this is napoleon bonafrog so if you're gonna have mutated turtles you got to have a mutated frog and how great is this shirt Happiness is friends with a unicorn on it. So cool. He's got a little fanny pack up front. He's got some kind of crazy stick coming out of his head. Napoleon Bonafrog. Love it. A more traditional Turtles character is Leatherhead. You know, another one of their kind of allies. One of the mutated friends. Giant, huge alligator. Uh, oh, yeah. 
Oh, it's Metalhead. Speaking of heads, here is... Didn't Donnie make Metalhead? He's like the robot Ninja Turtle. He actually comes into play during the last Ronin story that uh, recently was published in the comics. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool. This one is like a giant Triceratops. And what is his name? He's like a Triceratops with a muzzle on him. Kind of cool. Good colors. I can't remember all of these dudes' names. I'm not. I do remember Dog Pound. So there we go. Here's a big old. And this was like one of the very first ones that came out. He was in one of the early series. I remember because my kids absolutely loved playing with this giant mutated dog. Dog Pound. We got us. Oh, this looks like this looks like a Playmates version of like the original Ninja Turtles. Yeah, because this is this is Mikey because he's got his nunchucks. I bet you. Oh, here we go. All right. So here's here's another one. So, again, they're trying to go back and call back to... This is probably Donnie, because... No, it's something else. But they're trying to call back to those original original figures. Here's one. So, Raph. Raph, because he's holding. And, again, remember, see, like, their, their knee pads are just brown on these. Oh, these are cool. Let's see. That's, that's the regular Raph. There's got to be another one in here somewhere. Let's... Is it... I don't know. I can't stand not finding it. All right, we're going to hold these out to the side and come back to them. So while we're looking at sets of turtles, this is a set that I recently picked up because I didn't have it as a kid. And I really only had the original turtles when they first came out. But I'm like, man, it would be so cool if you could open up their shells. And so recently with the Mutant Mayhem movie, Playmates reintroduced a line of basically kind of original looking turtles, but with storage shells. And I just, I couldn't help it. I kind of had to, I had to grab the four of these because it's just such a great, cool concept to have them and be able to put all those little nunchucks and throwing stars and whatever else back in their shells. So really cool. Thank you, Playmates, for bringing these back out. One of the one of the better of the original toys. He's got pizza. Mikey's got a pizza hidden in his shell. So here's all four of our guys with their storage shells. Very cool. Set those. Try to keep those dingalings together. Set those over here. Okay. Oh, you look so cool. But what is your name? Actually, is it? I tried to write some names down because I knew I wasn't going to remember everything. Uh... I don't know, but you're awesome. Giant wing. Cool colors. Cool paint scheme on this one. Ah, uh, here is Karai without a head. We'll need to find Karai's head. This is Karai as a serpent, so she's got, like, serpent arms. We'll we'll hold her out. Here's, a, like, Space April. Definitely not as cute as the original April figure. Her head's kind of too scrunched down. I don't really love that. That's not awesome. Leo, I did, I think, obviously, I kind of bought multiple versions and they released like just slight variations of the guys so oh here's another one of that one so it was easy oh and here's here's mondo gecko's skateboard it would be really cool if it said christian hasoy on the bottom that would be pretty dope but they did they kept coming out with different versions to you know sucker me in and get me to continue buying versions of these oh there it is here's karai's nope yeah here's karai's head with a giant serpent on it and there it is Unmask, so we can put this on the Karai Serpent body, which is right here. All right, let's get this together. Make it happen. Yeah, there we go. It's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool looking figure. Here's one that actually does date back to some of the earliest days of the comic. This is Kirby Bat, and I want to say, isn't this April's dad as like a mutated villain? But of course, he's named after one of Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird's artistic idols, Jack Kirby. And they threw as many Jack Kirby references into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles as they possibly could. But definitely Kirby Bat is a, a straight homage to the master. Yeah, baby, fish face. Oh, he's got a mouser on him. So all throughout this box, there's like mousers. So we'll find a bunch of mousers when we get to the end. But here's fish face. Oh, I thought it, I thought it would open. Of course, he has an air tank, I guess, so that he can breathe on land. You know, I, I suppose. I guess he doesn't need it if he's underwater. Got a cool fin going there. Nice. 
Yeah, Bebop. Now we found our, our team up. Nothing better than, is he a warthog? I guess a warthog with a mohawk. We'll find Rocksteady, get you two guys back together. This, this shredder, I know that I got some kind of special, like, Comic-Con exclusive shredder. I'm not sure if it's this one or not. And I don't even know what made that one particularly special. But I do know that that's a, that's a pretty cool shredder figure with the removable helmet and everything. Cool. Here is another Master Splinter. Good. Ah! Fugitoid. How great is this? Another character that was introduced way early in the Turtles comics and has made it through all the different media that they've been in is Fugitoid. And this is a good one. Really cool little robot dude. How have we gone this long and not run into Casey Jones? It is remarkable, but here is maybe the Turtles' bestest pal, uh, certainly right up there with April, Casey Jones. And he comes with that goofy hockey mask. He's He actually, this is cool, like his different like hockey sticks and golf clubs and stuff would all fit on the back here. He's got his pad with spikes on it. That's a good figure. Uh, Slash, right? I think this dude... I think this dude is named Slash. He's like another mutated. Is he a is he a turtle or is he a different different kind of figure? Still cool. All right. Oh, here's a little bag. It's got mousers and weapons in it, and there should be like a million mousers just hiding down in the bottom of this thing. All right. Here's a good one. This one. Oh, mouser. They're everywhere. They're gonna be all through it. This is. Oh, you guys have got to help me with it. I'm trying to remember. Is it? Oh, it's Neutralizer. Neutralizer, because he's a newt. Look, he's got his, like, eyes and this crazy, like, newt tail. Neutralizer. There is nothing better than a good pun. And I, I really think that, like, Robert Kirkman on Invincible was inspired by all the punny names of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when he came up with, like, Adam, Eve, and Rex Splode. And we're going to do some more Invincible stuff coming up, so be on the lookout for that. But certainly, the Turtles had so much influence from the 80s moving forward that they really kind of touched every single thing. This one's Razor. Razor. I'm not sure what kind of animal he is, but he's got like skeleton bones coming all out. It's pretty spooky. Is it like a wolf? Could be like a wolf. I definitely don't want to run into it. Here is a... Mutated foot soldier, kind of half cybernetic, crazy foot soldier. Oh, Rat King made it all. Oh, Mouser. Going to be plenty of Mousers running around. So cool. I think I bought as many Mouser packs as I could find. That's why That's why you'll see, you know, you just kind of reach down in here and there's Mousers everywhere down in the bottom. But the Rat King, that's a creepy looking figure, man. It's hard to see, but he's got... A nasty head sculpt hiding back in there. And ooh, look at these like mummified wrapped legs. It's pretty cool. Alright, who is this gigantic dog looking thing? I don't know. Let me see. I'm see if I can come up with the name for it. I am just not going to remember. But cool figure. Pink, giant arms, biceps, big, huge fat belly. He's got a meat tenderizer. He's like a butcher. He's like a pig butcher kind of thing. Oh, the irony of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle villains. Here we got some more of our, our little turtles. Love those. More little turtles. We've got, oh, Baxter Stockman as Stockman Fly. Man, nice job. Really great paint on that. That's pretty cool. And it looks like, oh, another Casey. This Casey actually has his has his hockey stick on, so we got we got his that's a little different because, oh, oh, I see what's different about it. You can remove, oh, the other one just didn't have the mask on it. Okay, so so that Casey Jones came with, like, a removable hockey stick mask. But let's, oh, there it is. There's the last of those four of the original-looking turtles in their red bandana. And we'll go out with arguably the most popular turtle of all, Raphael. He always kind of gets the coolest look. He's the one that got to keep the red bandana as they moved into full color, four color goodness. And I just think he's great. 
So again, if you guys want to see more Turtles videos, if you want to see me go through my Super 7 Ultimate Turtles videos, hit me up in the comments, let me know. And as always, for the best in comics history and action figures, subscribe to Carbon Scoring.